Every year, more than 12 million tourists visit Niagara Falls. But what many people don't know is that originally, the falls were located 11 kilometers further downstream from where they are now, and that one of the first hydroelectric power plants in history was built here. Today we're talking about Niagara Falls, and actually, let's start by clarifying that Niagara Falls is really made up of three different waterfalls, two of which are in the United States and one in Canada. The Canadian one is probably the most famous, the Horseshoe Falls, named for its horseshoe shape, which is well known precisely because of its unique form. This one is 800 meters wide and has a maximum height of 57 meters. The other two waterfalls are on the US side, and they're a bit smaller in size. In fact, there are the American Falls, which are 320 meters long, and the Bridal Veil vale Falls, which are 17 meters long. Just think, in total, more than 3,100 tons of water flow over Niagara Falls every second. But how did these waterfalls form? We're in the last ice age, in what is now the area between Canada and the United States. Here, between 15 and 12,000 years ago, much of the ice began to melt. This, as you can easily imagine, made an enormous amount of water available, which went on to fill all those huge basins carved out by the glaciers themselves. Well, those basins filled with water actually still exist today and are none other than the great Canadian lakes, like Lake Erie or Lake Ontario. Right between these two lakes, in fact, a river began to flow, the Niagara, which carried water from one to the other. This river flowed over a series of rock layers. The uppermost layers are made of dolomite, which is a tough rock composed mainly of dolomite mineral, like the kind you find in Trentino Alto Adige, just to give you an idea. Meanwhile, underneath there are much more easily erodible sedimentary rocks. These latter rocks, formed from the compaction of clay, mud, and organic matter, are weaker and tend to erode first, which leads them to collapse. And these collapses, in turn, also cause the overlying sections of dolomite to fall as well. By doing so, the escarpment was formed, that is, this huge step that we can still see today. And this step also has a very high geological significance. If we could remove all the water and see the rock behind it, we would be able to see a succession of layers that formed over more than 400 million years. But have you ever imagined what Niagara Falls would look like without water? Well, some people actually saw them like that less than 60 years ago. In June 1969, in fact, an American-Canadian commission decided to deliberately dry up the American Falls in order to remove all the debris that had accumulated at the base. We're talking about huge blocks of rock that had started to reach a volume of over 100,000 cubic meters. In practice, these were reducing the overall height of the waterfall, and as you can imagine, that's a problem, especially from a tourism and landscape perspective. So that year, after building a temporary dam to divert the flow toward the Horseshoe Falls, work began to remove all these blocks and give new life to the waterfall. By the way, this isn't the only problem related to erosion. In fact, maybe not everyone knows this, but the Niagara Falls haven't always been where they are today. In the past, they were located at Lewiston, which is 11 kilometers further downstream. But how is that possible? Well, it's simple. That same erosion process we've talked about keeps happening over time, gradually wearing away the rock and causing this huge step to move further and further back. In the past, in fact, there was a single waterfall, which later split into three different streams when, as it receded, it encountered Goat Island, the island that's still there today and divides the flows. Keep in mind that this natural erosion process is capable of making the edge of the falls recede by about 90 centimeters per year. This is a significant figure, and that's exactly why, over the years, numerous hydraulic engineering works have been carried out, which have managed to reduce this value to just about 30 centimeters. Still, precisely because of this ongoing erosion, the Niagara Falls are destined to disappear. Of course, I'm not saying it'll happen overnight. We're still talking about something like 50,000 years, but sooner or later the continuous retreat of the falls will reach ground that's easily erodible and will be worn away quickly, effectively eliminating the drop that we all know. Anyway, that's still a long way off in the future, so for now we can continue to keep enjoying this truly magnificent spectacle that fascinates us just as much as it did the early French explorers who first arrived here back in the year 1678. 
This date is often cited as the discovery of Niagara Falls, but that's not entirely true. This is the year of discovery by Europeans, because Native Americans had already been living there for a very long time before that. In fact, the name Niagara itself is believed to come from the native term Anguillara, which means thundering noise, referring to the sound of the rushing water. In any case, the first European settlers were amazed by this beauty and brought the legend back home, where in no time the waterfall became the ultimate symbol of America, at least until the Statue of Liberty was built. Just think, the fame of this place even reached Croatia, where it said that a faded photograph of the falls ended up in the hands of a young, ambitious boy. That boy was Nikola Tesla. From a young age, Tesla was deeply fascinated by Niagara Falls, even though he never could have imagined that he would one day become one of the main characters in its story. We're actually at the end of the 19th century. Tesla had just resigned from Edison's company after a heated argument. Tesla, in fact, argued that alternating current would be the best solution for transmitting electricity over long distances. Meanwhile, Edison, who was Tesla's employer at the time, insisted that direct current was the better solution. This difference in vision, combined with Edison's failure to pay Tesla for his work, officially ended their relationship. So Tesla quit and went to work with another electricity tycoon, George Westinghouse, who shared his vision of transmitting electricity using alternating current instead of direct current. Thanks to their ambition, Tesla and Westinghouse managed to accomplish a project that had seemed impossible until then, harnessing the power of Niagara Falls to generate electricity. In other words, in 1895 they created one of the first hydroelectric power plants in history. Today, in fact, this power plant is no longer operational, although it can still be visited by tourists, and in its place two other plants have been built, the Sir Adam Beck 1 and the Sir Adam Beck 2. Alright guys, thanks for sticking with me up to this point. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions about Niagara Falls, write them in the comments because, of course, there's so much more to talk about, so let me know. We'll see each other again in the next video, always here on Geopop.